Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. My name is Eugen and today I am bringing for your viewing pleasure a fountain pen that I have discovered on Amazon. A fountain pen that I consider it to be very interesting and that I actually like. The La Cieva Lux fountain pen. I discovered a fountain pen by chance. I was actually looking for something else at the time and the colors of the pen as well as the fact that it had a number 6 Schmidt nib really grabbed my attention. I was a little bit skeptic about ordering it but after noticing that similar pens with a abalone encrusted are usually 2 to 3 times the price this one had, I decided uh, to take a chance on it. It also helped that the order was on Amazon and the return process they have is very easy in case something gets off or not as advertised. So I shelled out uh, the 137 Canadian dollars with free shipping and the very next day this box was inside an envelope at my door. Since this is pretty much a complete uh, new brand for me that I never heard of it uh, up until uh, I noticed this pen. I kept the box to show it off here in case uh, anyone is interested. So uh, let me go quickly through its contents and then I can go into more details on this fountain pen. The box that it came in seems to be made out of uh, cardboard and it has this nice uh, elastic band with a bow attached just to keep things tight and close. You can easily slide out. And then we can actually open it up. This has a magnetic clasp or door. And once you remove it, you will get a small card, which kind of a like a thank you note. Uh, the fun thing that I notice is that this is uh, Japan, US and UK, which is interesting. Pen came inside a velvet, uh, sleeve that can easily be slide out inside uh, there was also two cartridges small international cartridges uh, blue and black and nothing underneath that's it for the box opening the velvet sleeve will allow you to remove the pen that it's encased in another plastic sleeve And once it's removed from there, you can finally have a look at this beautiful thing. As mentioned, the fountain pen is uh, pretty much covered in uh, abalone uh, shell strips that actually on my copy, they are laid down very nicely and uh, they almost uh, match, creating almost a perfect seam. And that's the story for the barrel as well, not just for the cap, and even for the fake knob at the end of the barrel. As you can see the fountain pen is fairly literally straight, a straight barrel that uh, has a small step down at the end and then continues with a little bit of a tapered end where you can actually post uh, the cap and the cap it's pretty much straight no actual finials both of them uh, both ends are pretty much uh, flat the end on the barrel seems to be a little bit conical but barely visible to my eye. The only way you can tell is by seeing that uh, pointy thing in the shadow. What I like about this fundament is that uh, they were very, very generous with uh, the uh, Abalon. So pretty much 95% uh, 90, of the pen is covered in Abalon shell. The only uh, chrome pieces that he has it's at the ends or just a small interruption between the parts of the pen and uh, I guess the biggest part of uh, the chrome trim is the clip which by the way it's actually very usable works fairly well doing the shirt test there's a little bit of fight to uh, put the clip over the shirt but once it's over it slides in very nicely and uh, once it's in your pocket all the way in you can only see the silver trim and the abalone will not show. Removing it, very easy, not a problem, nothing snags. Um, as you've seen, uh, this pen actually has a 
semisphere at the end of the clip and that makes uh, things glide over quite nicely. The cap, it's a pull push uh, cap. It removes very easily, very nicely and it clicks in place just as nicely with a very affirmative click. And once you remove it, it will reveal a fairly short section. However, the section is covered uh, in abalone strips as well, which is really nice. Usually you don't see this uh, in this type of pens. With a very small step up between section and uh, the barrel that is very smooth. And a stainless steel silver-like color Schmidt number no. 6 nib. And obviously the uh, feed that comes with these uh, nib units. I hope that uh, the camera can capture the details of the pen and uh, the way the sabalon shell looks to my eye. It's really, really beautiful. I know you get a lot of glare. The pen sits uh, very well in my hand. I like the length it has. It's just at the minimum size that I would need uh, to write uh, unposted. And the balance of the pen is actually really good. I like it. Oops, if I get it to balance, it's pretty much in the middle of the pen. But if you find that this pen is too short for you, the pen does post very nice and secure and it makes a click. You can still twist it, but it won't twist freely. You actually have to do it uh, yourself. And that's a good thing because you're, if you're the kind of persons that wants to align their clip with the nib, just a small twist and you're there. And the balance in hand, uh, it is a little bit more top heavy. However, at least for my hand and the way I hold the pen, I don't consider it that heavy. I, uh, I can definitely work with a pen posted and definitely the length that it gives me, it's something that I could, uh, I could definitely use. And the balance of the pen, like I mentioned, does shifts towards the top of the pen. Whoops. Almost on the band. Uh, looking inside the cap, um, not a lot of things going on in there, as you can see from the endoscope video. Uh, it does come with a plastic inner liner that seems to be fairly simple, but from what I can see, it's quite efficient. As mentioned, the section is a little bit uh, short. However, the way I usually hold it, I usually hold it like this. So I'll have my two fingers on the section and my thumb uh, on the barrel. And even if you hold it from here, I think there won't be really issues. Uh, it, it could work very nicely. Uh, the step up is really rounded. You can barely feel it. Even if you press hard on it, uh, nothing, nothing bothers me. Removing the barrel will uh, uncover the converter that comes included with the pen. And this is actually a very nice converter, very smooth. I mean, that I say even better than the Schnipp converters. It's really smooth. Hopefully it will function just as well. And going back to the battle, uh, again, as you can see from the endoscope video, not a lot of things going on in there. There's definitely a um, metal tube inside where the abalone shells are glued on but nothing out of the ordinary. Everything looks nice. And this is pretty much the fountain pen. Um, I'll be honest, uh, I do have one or two other abalone shells and uh, this one has the most amount of abalone shell on it. I'm pretty sure it's actual abalone shell. I don't think it's any uh, fake material or something like that. And uh, yeah, I can't take my eyes off of it, sorry. I really like the details on this thing. And I hope that all the copies that are out there are just as well put as this one. Unfortunately, I don't feel like buying another one even though I'm tempted, tempted and see if uh, I have the same uh, luck. 
Anyway, I'll stop myself there, otherwise this entire video will be just um, showing off uh, the pattern, uh, playing some nice softcore uh, music. So uh, let me uh, get into inking up this pen, which hopefully will work, and then we'll do a writing test and we'll end it with um, a sketch and uh, some conclusions. For today's drawing, um, I was planning to go back to this um, Chinese carboning that I got from Amazon. Um, it's named Colbarges Van Gogh. As usual, remove cap, remove barrel, piston down, nib in the ink, and then go halfway up, then go back down, and then go all the way up. This converter seems to get a really nice feel, I like that. And the pan cleans up very nicely, not an issue there, including the nib. And as usual, I had to ink myself. And doing a small writing sample, I really hope this pen will work nicely. I will firstly try it um, unposted, just to see how it feels. So this is, uh oh, okay, La Cieva, Lux, Fountain Pen. Ooh, the knee feels a little bit dry, but works, not an issue. I might give it a little bit of a floss before doing the drawing. However, no issue with the nib so far. And the reverse works just as well and gives me quite a nice fine line. All right. So, I actually like the nib, uh, looks like it uh, does need a little bit of uh, flossing, so I'm gonna do that uh, before the drawing, but other than that, everything works as you should. And you can get a very little bit of line variation with this nib, but again, it's not really a flex or a semi-flex, so don't push it, you might ruin it. So far, so good. I'm actually excited about trying this out. And yeah, I will most probably use it unposted. It feels a little bit unwieldy with the cap uh, posted. This is much better, much better. I like it. All right, so let me go um, into the sketching part and I'll let you know what I think about this uh, beautiful thing. See you soon. As you probably see, today I came a little bit prepared. Some time ago, before I decided to go on a freeform drawings slash doodles journeys, um, I had this sheet of paper prepared with some uh, splatters. I was planning to do something else with it, but since I never got around it, I decided to use it today and see what I'm gonna get from it. And uh, well, I don't know what I got. I guess the keyword is again, uh, interesting noodle doodle. As mentioned on the writing sample section, I had to floss the nib a little bit and uh, as soon as uh, that was done, uh, it started writing and drawing with a very good flow and had no issues with it. Well, except the fact that the pen is uh, very distracting and uh, kept on taking my eyes off the drawing and uh, making me uh, stare too much at those pretty colors of uh, the Avalon. And uh, I think this is what happened with this drawing. My hand started with something and then ended doing some odd swirls. I wonder why. Um, I might keep this pen for writing only. It's too distracting. What do I like about uh, the Lachieva Lux? I like the metal construction of the pen but I appreciate even more the fact that uh, all the bits that your fingers touch and grip 
the pen are uh, encrusted with abalone. Makes it for a very nice uh, tactile feel while uh, giving you a nice hefty feeling. Now I have to mention that the abalone is covered in uh, some sort of resin so you don't actually touch the abalone shell strips. I also love how the abalone strips are laid out. Um, nice almost seamless pattern and uh, that the abalone is present pretty much everywhere like I mentioned. Cap, section, barrel and even the end of the barrel with the cap posts. Usually most of the abalone fountain pens I have seen have only small portions or parts of the cap or barrel or sometimes just the barrel where they add the abalone. And uh, usually they sell for higher prices as well from what I have seen. I also appreciate the fact that this pen comes with number 6 nib, especially Schmidt nib. As I have mentioned this uh, many times, I have a weakness for these nibs, so there might be a little bit of bias in there. But in all fairness, even if I would not like this nib, uh, this thing is perfect. Smooth with just the right amount of toothiness and reverse work great as well. And uh, to round it up, well packed for those that care about packaging, converter words included, uh, as well as two international cartridges, blue and black good balance in hand unposted for me at least and uh, when you post it the cap post nice securely and with an affirmative click what i don't like about the uh, la chieva lux personally there is nothing that i really dislike about the pen now i could just be lucky and got a nice copy i don't know much about the company and their uh, q a process so there are chances that not all copies are that good but based on what I have, I really cannot complain. If I have to guess at what people might not like, the only thing that comes to mind is that the pen can be top heavy when posted, especially if you have smaller hands. In that case, I would say that unposted might be a better choice. Oh, and um, I almost forgot, <laughs> I had to floss the nib uh, to get the flow proper something that most probably a more rigorous cleaning would have fixed it as well by removing the nib and feel. Overall, I love the pen. I think it's gorgeous and the abalone pattern is as close to perfection as it can be. Not that I am an expert on this or anything. One thing that I forgot to mention and it's on the list uh, of the things that I like, there is absolutely no branding on this fountain pen. I don't know the reason, but I don't care either. I like that. As a final recommendation, since this is a new brand to me at least if you're interested in this fountain pen, I would recommend to buy it from a place where you know you can return it in case something is wrong with your copy. I have seen this pen in other places than uh, Amazon but as an odd thing everywhere else I have seen it, it's sold uh, for double or more than double the amount I paid on. At those prices, I think it's maybe a little bit overpriced. I think uh, the Amazon price I paid, in my opinion, it's uh, fair enough. If I have missed anything or you have any other questions, as usual, leave a comment below and I will try and get to it as soon as I can. Thank you for joining me today and I hope I'll catch you next time. Wish you all the best and a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.